Hello, everyone, and welcome to this episode of The Chocolate Life Live. My name is Clay Gordon. I'm your host and moderator today. I'm also the creator of thechocolatelife.com. Before we get stuck into it, I want to remind everybody that this episode is brought to you today. This, today's sponsors are the members of The Chocolate Life. If you're not a member, please go ahead and join. Like, comment, subscribe to the videos, YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, wherever you happen to be watching today. All right. And with that, let's get stuck into today's topic, which is about the 2023 Craft Chocolate Challenge, the 2023 Craft Chocolate um, um, Challenge online tasting, which is happening shortly, and um, the, some info about the upcoming 2024 Craft Chocolate Challenge. And to uh, talk about that today, I want to introduce you to my guest, um, Dustin Cornett of the um, uh, Chocolat Inn. Um, Dustin, how are you today? I'm good. Thanks for having me. And to Mark Joyce of Blues Proof Chocolate uh, in Kittredge, Colorado. How you doing? Tickled to be here. <laughs> and it's great to have you, Mark. So just in case um, it, things get a little, little crazy, we're having a little technical issue. Not entirely sure what it is that's going on um, with Mark, but we're getting an echo there. And so you will hear the echo sometime. Echo you will hear the echo sometime. Yeah, Not entirely sure where it's coming from, um, but we're going to have to ride on the microphone, the microphone uh, to make sure to make it doesn't sure it become, become overwhelming. overwhelming. So, so Dustin, if we can, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share uh, the current page of The Chocolate Life. Um, and to let everybody know, this is the homepage of The Chocolate Life right now. If you go, you can see here is the post for this episode of The Chocolate Life Live. I do one for every single episode of The Chocolate Life Live. All sorts of resources, where to watch it, an episode overview, all the things you need to know in order to be able to um, follow along with this episode. So you don't need to, you know, grab um, links and URLs and things like that. As we go along, you can go and find these things after all the information after the fact. And then I also want to talk about um, this new page, Dustin, this is some, this is a work in progress. This is the new homepage for the craft chocolate challenge. Tell us a little bit about what's going on here. Um, uh, going back all the way to beginning. So we've had the 2022 challenge and the 2023 challenge. So we've done two episodes of it. Why did you create the 2020? Well, why did you create the craft, craft chocolate, chocolate challenge in the first place? So I created it as a way to find how to make better chocolate. So I'd enter some contests before and tried to engage it that way, but I didn't get a lot of feedback. And I was more so interested in learning how to better craft my chocolate than the shiny sticker. Shiny sticker is great, like those two. But I wanted to know how to make my chocolate better. And I'm not in an area where I can just go network with some other chocolate makers. So I thought this is probably an issue with a lot of chocolate makers. So I thought a way to fix that issue is to create something that helps everybody. So that's why I created the Craft Chocolate Challenge. Um, and that's why it's set up the way it is with like no entry fee and... Um, a minimum amount of uh, bars that can enter so we can make sure we give adequate adequate feedback and everything like that. It's all paid through by sponsorships, donations, things of that sort. Um, and starting from nothing and then now having two seasons under our belt, and we're able to actually invest in a website. So created the Craft Chocolate Challenge, its own website, apart from my business site that I'd been using previously. And I've locked in a few more years of awards where I was able to purchase more at a time to kind of get the price per award down a little bit. So I have that stability. So we're locked in for three more seasons. Uh, so that's great uh, to be able to kind of grow this program and help out chocolate makers around the world. Great. Um, you know, it, and, you know, as far as I'm concerned, and, and, and Mark, we'll, we'll get to you shortly, um, because I think it's really important um, to do that. So, you know, Dustin, I think the, the important part about what the craft chocolate is, uh, challenge is, is that it is a reaction to some of the other awards programs that are out there. So if you take a look at the way, for example, the International Chocolate Awards are set up, or the Academy of Chocolate is set, Awards are set up, the Northwest Chocolate Festival Awards, the, the Good Food Awards, um, as uh, you know, a starting out aspiring chocolate maker, um, these become you know relatively expensive um, programs to participate in. And you're as a, as a start up chocolate maker, you're not always getting um, the kind of feedback you're looking for in order to be able to improve your product. And if I understand, you know that was what it is that you were looking for in an awards program. 
and not finding it. It's um, how you decided to make it work for yourself. That That's exactly right. And expensive is kind of relative to what you get back with those other ones. So if you are winning those awards, then you're, you're getting bang for your buck because that can actually help you sell chocolate. It is really, it's good for that. Um, but it's not good for everything. It kind of needs to set up like a starting position. There, you know, there was a craft chocolate bloom, a, a big boom, I guess you can say. There's a lot of us small guys around and still are trying to develop better chocolate and, and win bigger awards. And mm -hmm. there's a need to, to have a, a space for that as well. And I'm, I'm not taking anything away from the chocolate makers that enter our contest because we've had some fantastic chocolate and I would put it up against any award winner in any other contest. So it, it's, it's not exactly to say whose chocolate is better, but to give you a better sense of how can I improve my chocolates? And, you know, you might not want to go the same way as some other makers and different things, but you need feedback from, from individuals. And that's what we try to, to do for everybody. Yeah, as somebody who's been a judge in multiple awards, I can tell you that the judging criteria, the judging process is very different. Um, the pool of judges is very different. What they're looking for is often very different. And again, this is not necessarily the Craft Chocolate Challenge is better or worse than any other awards program, or it's just that it has a different focus um, on, on what it is that it's looking to achieve. Now, right, I'm going to turn Mike's microphone on, so we need to be a little quiet so we don't hear the echo. So, Mark, um, you know, you know, I'm going to do this. I've known you for some time. Um, we've had conversations. You know, you've been a member of the Chocolate Life. You've been one of the more, um, one of the people who've used the, the monthly AMA, member AMA calls, I think, more than anybody else has. Um, so tell me a little bit about, you know, what it was that the Craft Chocolate Challenge, when you heard about it first, um, attracted to you? Are you entering any other awards program? Um, then, you know, follow that on with what your experience was um, during the judging process. How was it? And then what has been the outcome of your, um, the fact that you were, you, you were an award winner? Cool. Good morning, guys. I'm really tickled to be here this morning. I hope you can hear me all right. Yeah, you're fine. You're fine. Great. The problem Excellent. is I can hear myself can hear twice. Myself twice. <laughs> Excellent. Um, uh, the Craft Chocolate Challenge was an amazing opportunity for us to submit our bars and get feedback on our products. Um, I thought it was amazing that uh, we were able to get the detailed scoring sheet from the judges. Uh, which provided a lot of detailed feedback on uh, our bars uh, uh, in so many ways. And there were so many judges. Uh, we have our own tasting team, but they're not professional chocolate uh, critics or uh, uh, chocolatiers or uh, chefs. They're ordinary folks uh, who have been able to uh, sample our chocolates and give us feedback. So just the opportunity to submit our bars to get that kind of detailed feedback uh, was just an amazing opportunity. Uh, that in and of itself uh, would have been worth the time that it took to uh, prepare and uh, deliver the bars. Um, when we were awarded gold in our category, we were blown away. Um, we never expected uh, to that, get that kind of recognition for our bars. And the fact that it occurred just a month prior to our opening our retail location uh, was a real shot in the arm because it brang, uh, brought uh, instant uh, credibility to our, our chocolates. Uh, uh, and in fact, the local newspaper heard about the award uh, and wrote up an article uh, about us just a couple of weeks after the awards were announced. So between uh, uh, being awarded gold uh, in our category, silver overall, as well as uh, the article in the newspaper. Uh, we had uh, uh, a lot of interest about the shop before we even opened our doors. So um, uh, it was uh, not only an amazing opportunity, but uh, it uh, just provided us, like I said, a real shot in the arm uh, uh, when we were first opening our shop uh, five months ago. So um, if I can, I can. Yeah. Mark, so if I can, um, can you, again, 
I've, I've temporarily put you on mute so we don't get the echo, right? So you should be able to see an icon in your screen saying that you've been, I've unmuted you. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about the particular product that you were awarded the gold for? Because, you know, I know that it's very unusual, right? But um, can you tell us a little bit about what that was? Because the reason why I'm doing that is because I have, a, I have uh, or Dustin has an announcement, we will jointly announce something which I think is unusual for a competition like this, um, which is a direct result of the, um, the interaction that um, we had with your, with your chocolate. So go ahead. So go ahead. Great, thanks for the question. Um, and we are having a technical problem. I, uh, this morning when I fired up the computer to uh, uh, join the call, I found that uh, my internet was uh, uh, just not good enough, which was, uh, uh, but in the mountains, that's not unusual. So I'm down at my neighbor's. Uh, as soon as this seg my segment ends, I'm gonna go back to the shop so you can see the amazing uh, photo that I got from Clay just a few weeks ago. Um, Let's see. What was the question, Clay? <laughs> yeah. So, um, what, what, so one of the things. So, I want to because you're in the call today. What I'd like to do is I'd like to know um, the specifics of the bar that won um, your gold award because I want to jump into something a little later in the call. So I'm just doing a, a little bit of um, fortuitous foreshadowing. <laughs> sure. Um, I'm going to talk about the bar, but I wanted. I wanted to hit on the third point while a contest was important to me. Um, and that is it exposed me to a larger craft chocolate community. Uh, and in particular, uh, for example, Mike from uh, uh, Encore uh, Chocolates and Coffee in Kansas City uh, visited my shop a couple of months ago. And I had a master class on roasting, uh, which was just amazing. Um, He's a master roaster, um, blew me away. So that's the third advantage uh, for us in uh, uh, participating in that con contest was uh, just the larger craft chocolate community that exposed us to. Um, okay, about our bar. It's a white caramel. Um, we use Dutch beet sugar, which is uh, kind of an unusual uh, uh, ingredient. Uh, it's got a lower glycemic index. It has a different mouthfeel. But uh, so Dutch beet sugar, uh, Indiana whole milk, which we roast, uh, as well as the sugar, uh, Madagascar vanilla. Uh, and those, and those are the uh, uh, three ingredients. Ecuadorian cocoa butter from uh, Cocoa Supply. Uh, I think they're... Uh, they work with clay. They're a great group. I get a lot of my uh, ingredients from uh, Cocoa Supply. But they're uh, cocoa butter, uh, uh, Dutch beet sugar, uh, Indiana whole milk, and uh, Madagascar vanilla. Uh, I believe those are the only four ingredients in the bar. Um, it's, it's wildly popular. Uh, probably a third of our sales are that white caramel. Um, right. Yeah, caramelized white chocolate is a really interesting notion. So number one, but if I can, um, let me share that um, you're using a particular Dutch beet sugar, which is called Bastard Sauker. Um, Bastard Sauker is unusual in that it has a DOP to the Netherlands. Um, and one of the things that is unusual about it is it has a, um, uh, an invert sugar component to it. And that inverted sugar component adds a very, very interesting texture and mouthfeel and flavor to the chocolate bar that's not there if you're just using a standard um, beet sugar. Yep. Excellent point. Excellent point, Clay. Um, yeah. And I heard that uh, I'm now one of the larger importers of Dutch beet <laughs> sugar into the United States, States. And so... You know, I now keep track of the uh, boats coming over with the sugar. So, um, yeah, that's lovely. But the beet sugar provides a lovely component to the chocolate, both in terms of the flavor profile as well as the texture, which is really important for us. Uh, one of the things that we've added to that uh, white caramel is uh, roasted Oregon hazelnuts, mm -hmm. um, which I think uh, married really well with the... Uh, caramelized ingredients. 
back to you. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, what I want to do is just interrupt briefly. Um, if you're watching, um, uh, no matter whether you're watching in YouTube, LinkedIn, or Facebook, um, just go into the comments. Um, in YouTube, it'll be the live chat. Um, and let us know where in the world you're connecting from, not from YouTube, LinkedIn, or Facebook, but if you're in the United States or you're somewhere else, would love to hear that. Um, and I will get that information up on the screen. And then if you have a question, I will also, whether that question is for me or whether it's for Dustin, um, right, or whether it's for Mark, we'll get that up on the screen. So first, I want to give a quick shout out to Kurt Keisler for who's watching today, um, who says that... Um, Lila is amazing. So Lila Carvajal is the founder uh, and the chief driving force behind Coco Supply in the US, as well as in the EU. If you're watching, um, you can. they have a warehouse in Rotterdam. Um, Kurt is connecting from Charleston, South Carolina. So great, Kurt, thank you very much. Hey, um, and Kurt has a question for you, Dustin, um, about, so you don't have to be a commercial chocolate maker? in order to be able to join the craft chocolate challenge? What say you about that? Um, so, yes, maybe you kind of do, but not exactly at that moment. If you're thinking about becoming a commercial chocolate maker, then I would say yes. If you know that you're destined to do this just as a hobby, I don't think that it's really beneficial um in a sense that we only we limit how many makers can enter and how many bars can enter um if you want to send a bar to myself or someone else another judge i don't mind to do that um i can do that and they can fill out the forms and send you some information uh, i'm totally fine with that but actually being part of the contest i would like for you to actually be planning to be a commercial chocolate maker um at some point in the future um because we're, that's what we're trying to help mostly um, with our limited space. All right. So Kurt, hopefully that's the answer to your question. Do you have something you want to say about that, Mark, by any chance? Uh, I cannot say enough about Cocoa Supply. Uh, turnaround is good. Consistent uh, cocoa butter. Was that the question? No, we were um, talking about, um, you know, um, answering Kurt's question. But, you know, um, you know so if I can... Kurt, and if I can, um, Dustin, um, I think that um, the way Dustin answered that question is exactly right, um, which is um, we do want you to be um, either, either currently selling product or in the process of getting ready to open up um, a business and selling because, you know, one of the real strong emphases of this um, of this particular program um, is the feedback portion. You know, as judges, we are pretty much told that whatever it is that we write uh, is going to be sent to the participants. And if, re remind me, uh, Dustin, because I think this was the case that uh, we had one company that entered the competition with multiple bars but there was one bar that they only wanted feedback on. They didn't want it to be part of the competition. Am I, am I remembering properly there? Um, not, not exactly. There was some issues with how many bars they entered. So only allowed one bar per category, per category, per maker. So some of that got miscommunicated and they sent two bars under one category. So what I did was ask them to pick which one they wanted in through the contest and that I would send along the other bar just for a feedback only type of thing, just so they didn't waste sending so much, you know, so many chocolate bars to us. I don't want them to be out chocolate bars um, just because they didn't maybe read the fine print or something like that. So that's what the feedback only um, happened for a, a couple bars. And I will say this, there was a guy that reached out from Japan that was not a chocolate maker. He was 100% hobbyist and was going to stay a hobbyist, but he was really curious about his level of, of chocolate making. And I told him if he wanted to send a couple bars that, that I would taste it and some of the other in-person judges would taste it. And, you know, we'd send him back some information about it, not a whole form or anything, um, but some information because he, it'd have to all be translated to Japanese. So I wasn't going to do the whole form deal. Um, but 
we did that for him and we sent a message to him and let him know and perfectly fine. If we have time to do that, perfectly fine doing that. Um, we want to help, uh, but we have to focus on, on, you know, the people who are trying to make a living off of it and everything like that. So. Gotcha. I mean, that, that makes enormous amount of sense. And it's one of the things that is sort of, you know, for me personally, um, and I'm going to jump in here and solo me. Um, so just, you know, people who've been following the chocolate life know that I was a judge um, and I was a head judge for the 2023 competition. And so I've been involved as an advisor with Dustin helping organize the categories and thinking about how the judging is going to be approached. Uh, and for me, uh, one of the great things about working in a competition that's focused in this particular way um, is the flexibility that we have as a judging team to go and accommodate these kinds of special um, these kinds of special requests. You know, if I'm doing an open call, you know, at one of the inter big, big international awards, um, what's happening is that we might have 800 or 1,000 entries or more. Um, and so, you know, accommodating special requests is a real, real challenge. Um, so just, you know, for me in terms of, you know, what it is that's going on, I think this is really, really, um, really, really uh, important. So uh, Mark- I, I wanna say one more thing real quick. Of course. Since we have been, since Kurt's watching, so the world of chocolate makers apparently is kind of small because I met a mutual friend of his who happened to have one of his chocolate bars and let me try it, the Tanzania bar. That was great. It was fabulous. So you're doing good, Kurt. So <laughs> Great. So uh, Mark, I'm, yeah, again, I'm going to ask this just while you're muted so um, we don't get the echo in this. So, um, so as an outsider looking into this and thinking about the judging process, and this is completely spontaneous, so feel free to answer however you want to answer. Um, were there aspects of the judging that concerned you? Are there things that as we move into 2024, you'd like to see perhaps done a little bit different, differently? Mm. No, I, th I thought the, con the contest was extremely well handled. I like the diversity of judges, uh, that you had judges from professionals to chefs to just chocolate lovers. Um, um, that, that was great because we sorted out the different types of judges to see if there was any big differences in, in uh, what uh, just chocolate lovers versus the judges thought. And, uh, and so that was a, a nice uh, cut that we were able to do, but the diversity of judges was uh, great. If, if I had one comment, it was just the, uh, if I could encourage them to write more notes, I would, uh, because uh, we dissected each one of those judges' comments on each bar. Um, and so the, the notes that they put down uh, uh, were, were really informative. So, um, and I think that was a really unique aspect about the contest was that we got those judges for us. Um, it was uh, really informative. So, you know, anybody that's starting out uh, I, I think it's a, an excellent opportunity to get de detailed feedback from a wide range of uh, judges. So uh, more, the more info, the better. But other than that, no, I, I thought it was extremely well managed. It was unbelievable that Dustin can pull that off uh, uh, with the team he has, which is what Dustin and a small team. So, um, but uh, no, they did a great job. Uh, well, well, yeah, Mark, thank you for that very much. And I think that, you know, Dustin, this is something that you can, you can also talk about, is there's the deliberate choice to say, how do we keep this manageable, right, is part, is part of it. So, you know, you know, one of the things that we know about many other awards programs is that, you know, if you wanted to do 12 entries in one category, you could do 12 entries in one category. And the more entries you have in a category, the more likely you are to win something. But saying, you know, you know, there are four main categories. So they're dark milk, white, and then flavored inclusions, correct? Or just inclusions? Inclusions. All right. So I can do a dark, a plain dark chocolate or a flavored dark chocolate, right? A plain milk chocolate or a flavored milk chocolate, um, a plain white chocolate or a flavored white chocolate. I can do that. But if I'm going to put an inclusion in it, it goes into a separate category. 
yes, if it's if it's not ground smoothly inside of right. the chocolates, I consider that an inclusion. Right. So an inclusion rather than a flavoring. What I want yep. to do right now is what I want to do is um, you can go to the Chocolate Life right now and you can go to the post. And this is a page that's existing on Dustin's Chocolate Cafe website. And what you can do by scrolling down is you can find the entire judging panel. And so I don't know, Dustin, if you moved this over to the new website yet or you yes. copied, you have copied it. So I, I knew this was here. Right. And I didn't know it was on the new, new website. But you can see here, um, you know, we don't get the names of the judges, but you get the, the profile. So the background that they have, you know, if they have uh, food preferences or beverage preferences, you get an idea about what the, the, the profile of the judges is. And uh, Mark, I think this is what, in fact, you're responding to. Too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um, I don't. Yeah. To get this much information on the judging panel is pretty unique, um, you know, and to get this variety of judges, um, I think is unique. So, yeah, it was a great job. I can't say enough about it. But um, worth the time and energy it took for us to participate in the, uh, in the contest. Um, yeah, thanks again. I mean, it was incredible to be able to participate in that contest. Uh, was, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. So, you know, Dustin, um, I think what I want to do now is I want to go and talk a little bit about um, what's happening for 2024. All right. Okay. So let's, you know, go flip back to the new website. So we've got the 2024 challenge that's here. Um, Tell me a little bit more about what's going on with the 2024 challenge. First of all, there's a new home for the challenge. Um, this link is not yet on the chocolate life, um, but it will be um, very, very shortly. But l let people know a little bit about what's going on here um, and um, what you have plans for for the 2024 challenge. Okay, cool. Um, so before I start that, I just want to say one more thing about the, the judges. Um, so I screen the judges. So I send them some chocolate or if they have some chocolate, I send them the sheets and I kind of get an idea of if that judge will fit our contest. If not this year, maybe next year or if something, maybe they kind of see how we need feedback or, or what we're, we're looking for. Maybe they can learn how to provide that feedback. I'm not saying that if I say you can't do it this year, maybe you can do it next year, but screen the judges because we don't have that many of them. And every judge, you know, Mark is dissecting this information. So I need to find the best judge for him and for everybody else. So I had to start that process to make sure I get the judges that are going to best do the job and who, do, you know, it's, they get a bunch of free chocolate too. So, you know, so if I can just, for their work. <laughs> if I can jump in here just pretty, pretty quickly. Well, I mean, I can tell you um, from personal experience, the judging 49 bars of chocolate in five days um, is it for anybody who's never been a judge before um, it, you know, if you're in person, you've got all these bars in a very, very short period of time, you know, fortunately, or unfortunately, I was doing it remotely, but still the idea of judging 49 bars of chocolate over the course of five days, that's what, nine bars a day, between nine and 10 bars a day. Um, you know, figuring out how to pace yourself, figuring out how to organize, you know, what I want to do on any particular day um, becomes a matter of discipline. But I think it's interesting uh, if we can just follow that point, um, Dustin, um, is number one, if you've never been a judge before and you'd like to be considered to be a judge, contact Dustin and say, I'd like to be a judge. What do I need to know? Um, if you're, so for example, you know, with, with respect to the International Chocolate Awards, they're moving towards um, the International Institute of Cocoa and Chocolate Tasting judging process. So if you're not a certified IICC taster, um, it becomes a little more, more difficult to be a judge because you're not familiar with the process. So is there any one thing that you're actually looking for in a judge, Dustin, when somebody contacts you, um, that um, you would say, yes, this person would make a great judge. I want them to be a part of this. There's no exact thing other than being able to 
relay what you feel and think about their chocolate because I pick a diverse panel. So I like to have a lot of different um, palettes and ideas that go into it. Of course, I'm gonna pick people who like chocolate or care about chocolate, um, that is important. But I need that person to be able to tell me what they think about the chocolate, what they feel about the chocolate and maybe not over romance it. Like, you know, it, you don't have to deep dive into different notes about the chocolates and things like that and overdo it, but they need to be able to relay that experience to me and to the chocolate maker um, through their words. And that's not that easy. And I, I've noticed actually some chocolate makers who I, I pick to, to be judges struggle with that. They're able to, to pinpoint on good chocolate. Maybe you need to conch more, or maybe you need to roast differently, or maybe you need to do some certain like in, industry specific, very, you know, chocolate maker thing, but they don't really have a great way of relaying that information on paper sometimes. So finding someone with the ability to, to talk about such things mm -hmm. is important. So that's one reason I send out the forms and evaluate how they evaluate chocolates. So I, I evaluate the judges and I'm not saying that I'm a great judge myself. Um, I think there's better judges than me out there. Um, but that's well, one way I, I, I would say, forward, if I, I can, I want to jump in there and I would say there are different judges from you. Right. I don't necessarily know that there are better judges. For yeah. Me. I yeah. Think, I mean, yeah. Right, well, but you know, but if I can, you know, I'm if I can, Dustin, well, you know, <laughs> listen, listen, you know, one of, one of the reasons why I moved, I changed the way I evaluate chocolate. Right. One of the reasons why I changed is number one. Um, I realize that in the end, I don't have to eat the chocolate. Right. So my not liking it, or it not being to my taste is not necessarily the be all and end all of things. You know, my goal as a critic is to help people understand what they like and why they like it. Right. It's not for me to tell them I am the best taster in the world. I'm not. I mean, there are people who are much better at it than I am. And realizing that limitation was a fundamental, uh, you know, wake up moment for me. All right. But it, you know, what you need to do is you need what I found that I needed to do. Right. And I think this is one of the things that you're picking up on as a judge, you need to step. I, I think the, the thing that the craft chocolate challenge does is you're asked, we're asked to step back and think about this from the perspective of someone who might um, be just getting into craft chocolate, right. Who's trying to understand, you know, they aren't necessarily looking to go, Oh, this is, not just red fruit, but it's dried red fruit. And it's not just dried red cherries, but it's dried red rainier cherries or, or Bing cherry or, or, or something like that. The people aren't necessarily into that level of detail. Uh, and Mark, this is something interesting, I think for you as well in thinking about this, which is, you know, from the judging perspective, um, did these sort of more general approaches. You were not trying to go, you know, this is dried mission fig as opposed to dried some other kind of fig, but, you know, here's the sort of just general approach. Um, and, and interesting question. Did you, were you able to take any of the feedback, the tasting notes the judges gave you and did it change the way you talked to, to your customers? Go ahead. Go ahead. Huh, no, no, it's an interesting question. Uh, it, it, which I'm going to have to think about. I don't know if it changed the, the way the conversation occurs with the customers, but it did uh, uh, encourage us to go back and look at our formulations. Uh, especially, we submitted three bars and we got feedback on three bars. Uh, two were okay, one was great. Uh, we spent as much time with the okay bars as we did with the great bar. Uh, in that feedback, uh, because it did give us an opportunity to uh, adjust the bars, adjust the formulations. Um, I think they were spot on in, in their criticism of, uh, especially our milk chocolate bar, uh, because it didn't have uh, any unique feel features to it, uh, our flavors or components. So um, I think we really, especially with regard to our milk chocolate bar, we went back to the uh, we went back and uh, 
and really looked at how we were formulating the bar and which ingredients we were using and how we were treating the ingredients. So um, it was great. I've got one question for Dustin, though. Um, did you find your um, the judges locally or in the southeast or how do you manage just the process of, you know, identifying those first couple of sets of judges? It um, changed season one to season two a bit. Season one, I did have to go a little bit more on the local side and regional side. Nobody knew who I was, what I was doing. So it was a little bit of a tough sell to be like, hey, you were starting this new thing. You want to be part of that? It's uh, easier to do in season two. Um, so season one, I focused on a lot of in-person judging. So I, I hooked up with Paul Picton at Maverick Chocolate in Cincinnati. He was a, a great source and he helped uh, lead the way um, year one there. And we invited all the judges to the inn. I put them up in the rooms, uh, got them breakfast, and we had a few different sessions of tastings. And that was great. Uh, I did a couple remote that year. And then uh, season two, I still found some around the area um i was going for more people in the chocolate industry than just the culinary world uh so i kind of had to branch out a bit um but i did find some um around the region that could drive to the end so it was um fewer in person um than year one and actually less overall judges than year one too um but more on the the remote and this year or this you know season three I'm in a transition. I don't actually own the inn anymore. So I can't really put people up in the rooms like I did before since I own the rooms. Uh, so, and I'm in a transition myself and around the time of when it actually happens, I don't know exactly where I'll be. Uh, so probably about all of the judge will, judges will be remote this year. I'm, I'm fairly certain about that. So, so um, um, uh, was there an opportunity for the judges to interact before they did their scoring or after they did their scoring, either virtually or in person? In a really weird way, two of them met. One was a chocolate maker and one was a chocolate connoisseur, and they happened to meet um, before. And one mentioned to the other about the contest and were like, hey, I'm going to be a judge. Hey, I'm going to be a judge, too. Small world when that happens. So they interacted a little bit before. Um, and some were the, the, I had some of the judges I kept on from season one to season two, so they could interact a little bit more in season two ahead of the game. Um, but mostly it's just like it when in person interacting, because we did it together. I try not, I try to tell them not to really, you know, when they bite into a bar, not to make any noises. <laughs> Be like, Be mute don't mm, or ooh or whatever you know just mm. um but after it was all said and done and they went through the process of judging you know, we talk about it a lot of the bars and everything amongst ourselves which was which really fun for me and, and very enjoyable uh, process there and in the future maybe season four when i get settled maybe i'll be able to have some more in person and if we're able to get enough funding It'd be great to try to grow a little festival around it or, or a way to celebrate in, you know, what we're doing. Um, just we'll see where it takes us. Well, that's a really, really interesting segue. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm going to bring it up right now because um, there are a couple of ways. Um, so to answer your question, Mark, um, is that during the course of judging, I interacted with no other judges, right? Even though I was personally aware of who some of the judges were. Right. There was no interaction. And I disagree with you, Dustin. If you're in person tasting, right, when I was um, um, a member of the committee for the Good Food Awards and when I was judging the confectionery category and I was running my table right, of judges, I, I encouraged feedback among the judges because what I was looking to do, and we'll get to that next, I was looking to do was, again, focus this more on sort of like the emotional response to it rather than the analytical response to it. Right. And I think that's one of the things that we're, we're trying to do. It's not just a deep dive analysis of what the flavors are and this and that and the other, it's just, you know, would we buy this again? Would we recommend it to friends? You know, you know, it, it, we're talking about, I think in the end, those kinds of things. So, but 
when I put together my cross-country craft chocolate odyssey, right, there were three participants in, no, Maverick wasn't a participant. And he was a, a judge in the previous year. But you know, I went he was to, a pretty good part of it. So you can yeah, say that. Right. Yeah. But I went to visit with Paul Picton and Maverick Chocolate in Cincinnati. I went to Kansas City and uh, visited with Mike King at Encore Coffee. And then I, you know, until, you know, Mark's plans changed, I was going to be visiting um, in Kittredge, Colorado, to spending a little time um, with Mark and with Yuri um, to catch up um, with what was going on. So, you know, it definitely influenced you know, my odyssey uh, in terms of um, going forward, um, in, in terms of, you know, my moving from the East Coast to Arizona. But um, if I can, uh, I'm going to introduce this. So Dustin, um, is that another thing that we wanted to do in terms of growing community and sharing was to celebrate everything by organizing this online tasting event. And this is one of the things that we want to do this year is an online tasting event. So if you are a member of the Chocolate Life, if you're not a member of the Chocolate Life, uh, you can go to thechocolatelife.com, right? And you can visit this page and you can learn about the online tasting event. And what you're going to get is you're going to get a bar from all, all 12 bars from all nine winners, right? We're going to, Dustin is going to ship a kit to you right? And we're the U.S. and we're going to expand it to Canada, right? So in the U.S. and Canada, um, you can get one of these kits. And then on Sunday, November 12th, what's going to happen is that we're going to get together online. I'm going to send everybody who signed up a Google Meet link. And we're going to go through and do a virtual online tasting of all 12 winners. Um, and I'm hoping that as many of the, um, of the companies who um, participated in one will be able to join in that event as well. So you'll get a chance to taste the chocolate. You'll get a chance to speak with Dustin and with me and perhaps also interact with some of the, 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 um, the makers who won the competition. So that's what we're doing. Um, we're talking today about the, the Craft Chocolate Challenge online tasting event. Um, so you can go to this page um, and you can find out about it. Um, there is a link. So we're here are the the companies right who who um, whose chocolate you'll be able to taste. There's one from Norway and one from Japan. So it's not just a U.S. event. Um, Dustin, you and I have done a um, a live stream in a, in the past, so people can go and look at that live stream. Um, if you're a Chocolate Life member, there's a link. You can email me, and I'll send you the discounted member list. If you're non-member you can either click on this link down here or you can scan the QR code um, and you can, you can pay. Um, and um, the date to order is October 15th. So we need your, we need your order. We need your payment October 15th. And there's a very, very limited number of um, seats that are available. Right. So just, just, it's going to be a fun event. I mean, if you're working with chocolate, you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. I, you know, I say that for every single one of these episodes. Um, and so, uh, but you know, the opportunity to be able to taste all these things, um, at least two of the judges will be there. I'm hoping at least two or three of the, um, the uh, participant winners will be there as well. Um, it's just going to be a fabulous evening. Um, and, and audible, audible reactions are encouraged. And uh, yes, audible reactions are going to be are going to be encouraged at that point. Um, and and uh, uh, just uh, sorry, Mark, uh, just just for you, um, one of the things that we're going to be opening up in a couple of days, if what you'd like to be able to do is you'd like to be able to extend the member discount to your customers, right, without requiring them to join the Chocolate Life. Right. We're going to be able to give we're going to give you the code in a couple of days just to make sure that if you do have people, they're sitting on the shelf or sitting, sitting back, wondering if they want to participate sitting on the shelf. I don't know where that came from, um, but they're sitting back, not entirely sure what they want to do. They're going to be able to go ahead and do that. Um, so, Mark, uh, not Mark, but Dustin, uh, what I want to do is I want you to talk about. Um, so we're still going to have um, four awards categories. So there's going to be dark, so plainer flavored, milk plainer flavored, white plainer flavored, and then inclusion. So there'll be fill, still four entry categories. And then what there's going to be is there's going to be an overall. So there's gold, silver, and bronze. There's only one award for each level in each category, right? Which is, again, unlike other, other awards programs, there's just the one uh, award per category per level. 
Um, but then what they do is we take a look, you take a look, because you're the one who's doing all the math on this. You take a look and say, okay, here is the single bar that got the highest overall point score. And so they get the overall gold and there's an overall silver and there's an overall bronze, right? So at the moment there are these 15 awards. Is that the, yeah, that's right. Um, but we're at, you're adding a new category. And Mark, I want to let you know, this is something that um, you know, was inspired in part by you. It's something I've wanted to do for a long time. And so Dustin, can you tell us about the new meta award? So there's not a, yeah. there's not a category. It's going to be as the judges are doing their evaluation, they're going to be nominating bars in this particular new category. So can you tell us about the new category? Sure. I would love to. So yeah, there's not a first, second, or third gold, silver, bronze of this uh, award, um, but you can, in the, each contest, there will be up to three winners. Uh, they just won't be ranked. And it is the Innovation Award, and it's sponsored by Coco Supply, which is great. Um, so Clay, right, uh, you know, I knew that some bars were polarizing, and uh, we had discussed that before, and Clay mentioned, well, just because, you know, we need to celebrate that. It might not be a bar that could easily win a contest because of it being polarizing. You kind of are at, you know, you, you, who knows if, if the judges are going to like that certain flavor or not. If the more do than don't, then maybe you can win something. Um, but in a lot of cases, the polarizing bars or the unique bars um, don't win awards. So we created the Innovation Award to celebrate their innovation uh, and the differences and, you know, the world of chocolate, there can be so many different flavors and so many different things. And it's not to say that that is bad by any means. So it should be awarded. Right. So, you know, it, again, you know, for, for me, I mean, this goes back to a specific experience that I had as a judge at a table at the Good Food Awards. So I'm sitting around, it's the morning, the morning session was triage. We wanted to just get to the, the ones we thought really deserved consideration. And then we changed the tables so that nobody was judging in the afternoon what they were judging in the morning. And we had a particular point where I was sitting down with my table and I was saying, all right, the top two, we all, we all get. So, but we have, a, we have to make a decision between third and fourth place right, in terms of what we're going to award. And I'm saying, do we want to award another, and this is exact, salted butter caramel. I mean, we'd already had a lot of salted butter caramels. I mean, it's a really, really fabulous category. Who doesn't love salted butter caramel, right? Um, and whether it's a ganache or whether it's a carrot, you know, however it's incorporated into the filling. And then we had somebody who had um, entered a product which had marzipan as one of its elements, right? And they had flavored the marzipan in a way that I had never seen before, right? And we sat down with the rest of the judges at the table and we had this exact um, uh, conversation. Do we want to award still yet another example of something that is very common, right? Even if it's extremely well executed, or do we want to award a risk taker, right? Um, and so for me, you know, and this is something that happened maybe in 2015 or something like that. So I've been sitting on this idea um, for quite some time. And if I can say, you know, Mark, this notion of using an unusual sugar, so the bastard sauker. So it's not just polarizing, right, flavors. Like, oh, I like this and you like that, or I don't like this but I can understand, you know, you know, as a judge, for example, in like the International Chocolate Awards and things like that, I might, might run into a particular, uh, uh, particular place where somebody would go, I hate this. And therefore they're just going to give it, I mean, they're not, you're not supposed to do that. You're not supposed to let your own flavor preferences necessarily get in the way that way. And so this became um, a really interesting way um, to go about and, award, not necessarily, you don't have a category that you're entering into. I'm not entering this into the innovation category, but what it will do, hopefully it will do, is it will give people more freedom to enter more unusual things 
into the existing categories, right? Whereas they might be afraid to do something which is sort of fringe or something like that um, because they know it would not be um, worthy of an award. And so, you know, I'm, I'm, I, you know, I don't know how you think about this and I'll open up your mic a little bit in a second, Mark, so you can respond to it. But, you know, somebody could enter something into um, one of the categories and it might not place in the category, but it could win an innovation award, which I think we're not making the point that you have to win an award in order to win in the innovation category. I mean, you could be, you know, fourth or fifth or sixth deep in the category that you're one, but it's just such an unusual combination of flavors and flavors and or textures or an unusual ingredient or something like that. Everybody goes, oh my gosh, this is, this is great. Although I can tell you, right, if you've already won an award for a particular product, you know, and you're entering it for the second time, you know, we might, we might take that. Is it innovative anymore? Right. Um, um, but, you know, uh, your thoughts on that, Mark, what do you think about, you know, have, you know, does it, would it change your way, of, way. Uh, thinking about the products you pick to enter? I think it's a most excellent idea uh, because you're absolutely right. There's some chocolates that we've developed that, there's a small group of people they just really love the flavors of, but uh, it's not for most people. Uh, and I can think of a couple in particular. Uh, we've, uh, we've been playing around with the flavors of Colorado and uh, some of those flavors people can't imagine marrying with chocolate. And so it appeals to only a small group, but they really enjoy it. So uh, uh I think that that category is an amazing opportunity to showcase some of those bars. And as you were talking, I was thinking of, well, there's a couple I think I'd like to uh, submit just because they're, uh, I think, unique uh, flavor combinations. Uh, I don't think they would appeal to the masses, but, uh, and so I really appreciate that category. Uh, I am going to uh, bail in a couple of minutes back to the shop. So hopefully you'll be able to see uh, uh, the shop in the last few minutes. I don't know if we'll have the audio, but yeah, yeah, Mark, why don't why don't you go do that? Go back to the other place. When you come back in, um, I will just add you back into the stream and we'll put you up here. All right. So if you want to go now, we'll see you back in a, back in a couple of minutes. All right. All right. So uh, Dustin, um, while we're waiting for Mark to rejoin the stream, um, why don't you um, let us know? Um, who the sponsor of this award is. I mean, because this is, uh, I think, an important part of recognizing what's going on. So we have this new awards category for the 2024 uh, Craft Chocolate Challenge um, in innovation. Uh, I'm really excited about, you know, how it's going to show up on the judging forum, right, as well, because it's it's never, I, I don't know if anybody who's ever had, to, how, do, how, do you, how do you think about that in the judging forum? Um, but who is, um, who's sponsoring the award this year? Coco Supply. We've talked about them a lot on this live stream, but yep, they are the sponsor of the Innovation Award, and that it's amazing. They'll have their information on the back of the medals. I don't have the medals here yet. Uh, they should come sometime this month, and then I'll, I'll post online about, about that, but yeah. And there's some chocolate makers that only make unique chocolates. Um, so like Embers, so and you know, them being able to enter knowing that there's is kind of a category in a sense that they can be recognized without having to worry about if everybody likes something spicy or something with corn on it or anything like that. Um, Cause their chocolate is amazing. It's just very unique. Um, certainly very true. Um, you know, and you know, I'm hoping to get down to Phoenix at some point in the next little, in the next month or so and visit Tandy at her shop in Scottsdale. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm, again, you know, for me, you know, you know, reaching out to people and connecting with people and, and finding out who they are has been a, a real nice part of being a judge. Um, and so I, you know, I'm looking forward to those interactions. The only thing I can say is that I'm thinking about the flavors of Colorado. Maybe I, 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 I won't wait until Mark gets back, but I'm thinking about flavors of Colorado. Oh, he's back. So, hey, Mark, uh, oh, we got the echo. So I'm going to I'm going to turn your mic off for a second. So I was going to talk about. Oh, interesting. I'm going to talk about um, a. Oh, well, let me mute your mute your mic. Um, I'm going to hope that one of the flavors 
you do not enter that is sort of Colorado like is I'm not looking forward to chocolate covered Rocky Mountain Rocky. Prairie oysters. So I'm hoping that's not one of the things you're going to be doing. Mark, can you hear me? Oh, I think his he's internet frozen. is down. Yeah, it's frozen. That may be why I can't mute him because we don't actually have a good connection. But while Mark is there, what I want to do is I want to point out to that picture over his right shoulder. Um, that's a picture of a cocoa pod. Um, it's a picture that I took. Um, and um, if you go to the Chocolate Life, um, there is a page where um, you can go to the classifieds. I believe it is. Let's go see if I can share that. Um, you can go to classifieds and you can go to the home page and you can click on classifieds and um, i'm offering prints let's add mark to the stream um, i'm offering prints these limited edition photographic prints and the image that is above mark's right shoulder is one of the prints from this series so cool Anyway, so thanks, Mark. Can you hear me this time? Did you do you get my comment about Rocky Mountain Prairie oysters? And I hope that's not what you plan to be uh, entering. Ah, uh, all right. So for some reason, audio is not working. Anyway, but I really did. Right, this is the problem we had earlier with the internet in uh, Mark's new shop, which is in Kittredge, Colorado. Uh, anybody gets? It's about an hour south southwest if I recall from, from Denver, if you get that way. Um, so, uh, yep, yeah, no, he's still gone. So, uh, Dustin, we're, you know, sort of at the end of the hour. Um, is there anything, so we talked about the um, 2023 challenge. We talked about the 2024 challenge. We talked about um, the tasting event that's going to be happening in the 12th of November with the tickets available until the 15th of October. Um, shipping to Canada. Anything else you want to talk about in terms of what's going on with um, this? Yes. So we actually didn't talk too much about the 2024. I kind of threw gotcha. a judge curveball in there and we went off track. Uh, so I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, so we got the new website. So I need to fix a couple more things with that. Um, but the website is live uh, with some information and there's no link to enter just yet. So we'll open up to enter in October. I give a really long window for people to enter uh, just because the short window was hard for me as a chocolate maker. So I thought I can do a long window. I'm going to be here. I can take care of the chocolate. I'll take care of my chocolate. So that's fine. We do international. So in different climates of the world, different times, uh, some might want to wait till later. Some might want to do it right now. So we do a long window and uh, because I'll be transitioning to another place, um, We'll have to watch out for some details at the beginning of the year something possibly uh, an address might have to be changed or something like that but i want to accept the uh, entries until around the end of february this time usually i cut it off in january and that was because i, I needed to try to plan a trip to to go to japan with my family and we never really got a chance to do that so i was trying to figure out that timing well, thankfully, we were able to go this past spring, so I don't have to think about that anymore. So I can focus on not making everybody send me chocolate around Christmas and right before Valentine's. So after Valentine's, you'll have a little bit of time still with that mad rush at the end to, to get your chocolate here. Um, but there's limitations. We're only going to take a certain amount of bars, and I've set the, the limit for how many bars a maker can submit this year to two. So one, one maker can enter two bars um, and only one bar in one category. So you'll just have to pick which category you want to enter. And that, that'd be a way that we can try to help more chocolate makers. And you also, chocolate makers who have entered in the past, they can't enter the same bar. Um, we haven't been doing this long enough for there to be us to be able to see the same bar again. Um, maybe after a few more years, I'll, I'll change that from, you know, season one, season two can maybe enter the same percentage origin or whatever like that. But at the moment, season three is still, if you've entered that bar before, you cannot enter it again. Um, mm -hmm. cause we have, we've done our job for that bar as I see, as I see it. Um, 
We mentioned the Innovation Award, which is really cool. We're doing the online tasting uh, for 2023. I imagine we'll do that again for 2024 and try to keep that going. We're opening up for sponsorship soon to try to get more sponsors. We heard Coco Supply will be is sponsoring the Innovation Award, but we'll look for more sponsorships for the um, award certificates and um, just general sponsorship as well. So that's something. And we've created a donation button. If you don't want to sponsor or you don't want to enter, uh, you can donate. I would ask that if you're a chocolate maker that is planning to enter, if you do donate, um, do it in a way where we don't know who you are. Um, yeah, I don't know if it's well, set I up could, to be that I, way. but I, I could certainly say from my perspective and you know, Dustin is that if somebody does donate, it's not going to be information that you're going to give to the judges. So we won't know if no, in fact, yeah. So I, I will know, um, but I just want everybody to know that we're not, you know, we're impartial, we're unbiased, everything like that. Um, so I know in the past I've had chocolate makers want to, to take part and to help out financially. And it's just a bit of a conflict of interest there. If you think moving forward with things like that. So I just try to try to say that there's ways you can help. Um, there's other ways you can help too. So it doesn't always have to be financially. Um, but we, we do want to grow this and we do want to keep helping the chocolate makers. So, you know, this time we're purchasing bars from chocolate makers who have won to put into kits to send to people that can have that experience, which is amazing that we can we can just do that. That is, in fact, a really good point is that when we went and approached when you went, Dustin, and approached um, all of the chocolate makers, we said, well, we, we will, we want to buy the bars from you. We hope you will give us the best price you can give, right? We don't necessarily want to pay retail for these things. But one of the ways that we as a competition, and this is something that none of the other competitions does, right? So the International Chocolate Awards doesn't do this. The Academy of Chocolate Awards doesn't do this. Um, the Good Food Awards has their Good Foods Marketplace, which is scheduled the weekend. So um, you can participate in that and sell products, but it's not like the awards is buying chocolate that they're using uh, to promote. Um, and so one of the ways in which chocolate makers can help um, the awards is by helping to promote the awards in general, just letting people know about it, you know, that, 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 that perhaps they're participating in it. Um, so that there are lots of ways, uh, you know, local press, other kinds of things um, that can that can um, that can help grow the awards so that it can do a better job going forward. Um, and with that, what I want to remind people also is, yes, here is the homepage of the Craft Chocolate Challenge. I will add this link into um, the post for today. The post for today looks like this. Right. So you'll be able to find it um, right now. Um, this link right here. Um, where it says enter now, this link doesn't work, right? And I've asked Dustin to change the language of this link, enter soon, right? Although if you want to, you can go down to the bottom here and send your email address in and say, please remind me when entries are open. So if you're interested in this, you can go and contact um, them so that they will take care of this for you. Um, and then another thing that I do is right now on the homepage of The Chocolate Life, um, if you go there, um, there is this banner across the top. Right now I'm announcing the call for entries for the Academy of Chocolate Awards. And you can click on this um, link and it will take you to the page on the Academy of Chocolate where you can learn about it. Um, when Dustin um, makes this live, um, what I will do is um, I will make sure that on the homepage of the Chocolate Life, everybody knows that the call for entries is in fact open and active. And with that, Dustin, anything else you want to say before I close out the hour? Because we're a few moments past. I'm just super excited about this and to, you know, birth it, I guess you can <laughs> say, and watch it grow yeah. and then now be able to to work with you and, and, and work with Mark now and have everybody talk about it and like it's working, it's helping people. Um, it's growing. And if we can keep doing that, I mean, it's just really exciting. I'm, I'm happy to, to be able to do that and happy to connect with other chocolate makers and other people in the chocolate world. And I think we, if we can grow the knowledge of the, the industry, then it'll really pick up for everybody too. So it's just all about that. 
No, absolutely. You know, people who know me, who've been following me since uh, I started this what, back in 2001 know that, you know, I'm interested in, in growing the industry in general and awareness in industry. And so I think that uh, lots of different approaches are things that we need to do. Not, there's, there's no one right way to run a competition. There's no one right way to do a tasting. And so having lots of different um, ways of doing the same thing is, is really, really uh, important to me. Um, having um, that kind of diversity. So diversity of entries, diversity of origins, diversity of ingredients, all of this is really, really diversity of judges. I mean, it's all you know, really, really important um, to the way I think about it. Um, and for me also, you know, Dustin, the thing that I like about this is, you know, having the opportunity, having, you know, been an observer of this industry for so many years to be able to get some of the ideas that I have and, and for you to be open and considering them um, and as as parts of the challenge have been have been rewarding for me, you know, and seeing the work that's been done and the and the people the way people respond has been personally uh, gratifying for me. And I'm looking forward to the 2020 uh, the 2022 no the 2023 tasting, which is happening um, in uh, uh, almost exactly two months. Um, and um, what I'm going to learn by being a judge in the 2024 challenge. And until then, again, Dustin, thank you very much for being here today. And I will remind, remind everybody, right, that if you're working with chocolate and you aren't having fun, you're doing it wrong. Until